Yeah, live. Why would it be live now? It's not time. Are you serious? So they get like what? Uh, for like one That's uh, listen to you backstage. Yeah. <laughs> backstage access. There are no stories to me. What That's kind of stories are you interested in? All these court proceedings sometimes can get very tiring. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Back more, and forth. more, more, same more, same more, same more. This number two is that you didn't give. Prosecution, the case for end of story, so they dismissed it. It's always on technical Is that meant to be on press? Is anybody even planning for Christmas? I've not heard anyone no, planning for Christmas. It's part of this year. I know there's Christmas. Is that right? Like, what is that you do? Then go to Jamovia yeah, for Christmas. You know, I remember back in the day yeah, when, by now, you'd have been hearing jingles on TV and all that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like nobody who wants to pay for jingles anymore. I hear a lot of all these. Uh, so, uh, my wife that a lot of these um, black shows that used to be done, like all this Kuda, Star Quest, and everything. Mm-hmm. Oh, all the stuff. Mm-hmm. Nothing is taking place this year, man. Nothing this year. I know they used to do this to do that ultimate all search stuff. thing. Yeah, nothing. This year, she was saying. All the music and shows and all this. All right, guys, what's going on? Who was that? That's the thing. Mics are up. Today is live. Very good morning to you and special to every single one of you in right now to Smooth 98.1. Yes, listening to Smooth Breakfast with me, Valentine, and this morning inside of Freshly Press 981, which just started now, we're joined by three wonderful gentlemen in the presence of Adidumade. Good morning. Good morning, Lagos. Adidumade good morning, guys. can be found at Adidumade. We have Divo Corey, who's this morning pretty early. Good morning, Divo. Good morning, let's good morning. Good our family. <laughs> <laughs> and then we have uh, Bolaho, that's at Mr. G Quest on Twitter. Good morning, Bolaho. Good morning, Valentine, and Thank good morning, you so Lagos. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Uh, Lagos, you can communicate with us, share your ideas, your thoughts, and observations on this today's stories shared on uh, 981FM. Please hashtag freshly pressed 981. And on uh, YouTube, you can leave a comment in the comment section. Just type in the search box, smooth 981FM Lagos, and you find our live stream that's active right now. I'll come to you, Ade Dumade, for the first story, which is rather short in the detail. He said he cannot even afford a pain reliever or even water to drink. And it's a, it's a valid cry from a man who is really distressed. What are your thoughts? Well, um, it's kind of very interesting. I don't know why I always start with that, mm. but I find it very, very... Um, according to other reports that I read, it says that his account was frozen on Monday, so if they were frozen on Monday, like between then and now, you cannot afford Panadol. Well, anyway, let's put that aside. Mm. But however, we've not forgotten Mr. Mitu, who is on trial for accepting the sum of 400 million naira from the Office of the National Security Advisor. Mm-hmm. Now, he's also with his company, his Destro Investment. And one thing I also caught my attention was why did he make the, the application to the court via an oral... Uh, means why didn't he just apply to the court via a motion asking the court mm. you know particularly to unfreeze his, his account and maybe ensure that the 400 million is actually kept and reserves in case the judgment of the court is not in favor money back because a judge said he should um speak with the prosecution's counsel and they should try and read them. Mm-hmm. So, 
continues uh, tomorrow and Friday. Mm. So let's see what's going to happen because I believe that if they cannot resolve that blue now and then, then um, you might definitely raise it again in, during uh, the court proceedings on Thursday. Now, we must not forget that he's facing a several count criminal charge, bordering on criminal breach of trust and diversion of public funds. Now, I remember <laughs> reading one of his uh, interviews where he said, this is as far back as 2016 or so, that um, he had actually asked um, the officials that he sat with when mm. they were discussing payment at that time um, for that this is now payment for campaigning you know he, 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 he had asked them where the songs where, sorry where the source of the funds was and um, they had actually said that that, that they'll get back to him and um, they didn't up to today because what his position is is that he's innocent and that he didn't know the source of the funds and that if they had told him that the source of the funds was actually out of the national coffers as, a, as at that time mm. then he would have refunded the money and then he raises the question as to i mean really the veracity of that because uh, first of all not in our places and uh, i place the question that because it, since it's still a, a case in court but as it is that but how do you not know where money came from when you received no it? no 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 the, so it's it, no he did not say he did not know where the money came from mm. he was asking them where are you getting the money the from? the source right yes, from he, their own end yeah from their own end Thank he knows you. that the money is coming from them but he must have thought that maybe okay there's a party um should i say account mm. or something that the funds is coming through you know so he he has on that basis continued to claim his innocence mm. and let's see what happens but i hope they just unfreeze his account at least thank you very much i did my day for that analysis and now going to premium times newspaper uh, for this next story 5.7 billion naira shaw p fund court terminates a former katsina government officials trial in this story which is rather interesting uh, there's a report uh, the the details actually show that the attorney general of the Federation of Minister of Justice, Abu Malami, failed to hand over the case file to prosecution. And this led to an embarrassing moment in court where uh, the <clears throat> the uh, prosecution actually sought uh, the, the court's permission to stay the case and uh, just to give them time uh, to present the case file since uh, the, the ICPC did not hand it over to the state government before uh, or rather, the, since the Minister of Justice uh, told the court that he had collected the case from the ICPC but did not hand it over uh, to the state government before he traveled out of the country. What are your thoughts on this, Divo? Well, this is a bit of um, judicial technicality as well as um, high-level politics at play. Mm. Um, in this case, um, uh, misappropriation about $5.7 billion connected to Shopee funds in Castina State during the last administration. Now, some uh, government officials were indicted, uh, some special advisors, uh, the Director of Finance and Accounts for the Shopee Department, and then the Chief Store Officer. Now, the AGF had directed the, a the ICPC to uh, hand over the case to the government for prosecution, yes. for uh, to the wisdom, in his best wisdom. Now, um, eventually, when the case came up in court again, uh, the prosecution raised an issue that they could not continue because the case file had not been handed over to them as directed by the AGF. Hence, uh, the court took a position and uh, ruled um, the matter out. Now, uh, the prosecution counsel also did mention that not only did they rule it out, um, uh, they didn't acquit the accused persons, but they discharged them uh, from the bail granted uh, the court, so they were free to go. Mm. Now, the termination of the case may have confirmed the fears of the ICPC when they initially objected to handing it over. So, right now, this is all government at play. Mm. Um, but, I mean, the ICPC seems to be accusing the state government of, being, of colluding in this, saying that they deliberately f uh, try to frustrate yes. the court processes or, you know, being, yes, them being because charged. because they, they really want to know why the state government wanted to prosecute the case themselves. Uh, but maybe there is a connection between uh, those officers mm. and the present government in trying to uh, hide it. Now, uh, the thing is this, um, it's generally believed that the uh, um, the Shopee project was meant to improve lives, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it became a wind pipeline, uh, you know, a cookie jar for many people to dip hands in. So uh, about $5.7 billion trickled into uh, Casina State for infrastructural projects, which at the end of the day 
um, I believe, do not see the light of day. Mm -hmm. At the same time, this was during the time of uh, former Governor Ibrahim Shema, who is also facing a trial uh, of alleged fraud before the federal courts. Um, uh, uh, for me, um, these are some of the intricacies we begin to hear about uh, of some of these uh, cases and how well our judicial system is able to work through them at the end of the day to bring them out because we don't seem to hear at the end of the day convictions and yes. this is how many of them get filtered so meandering out. through yes, the different or, angles or, or details yes and, and at the end of the day they get dismissed on technicality so is the corruption war really winning when these kind of things happen mm. All right, so, uh, let's move on now. Thank you very much, Divo. We'll move on to you, Bolahan, for this uh, analysis of the story from this day newspaper. Nigeria loses $6 billion in Malibu oil deal. Uh, the new analysis was released by Global Witness. Uh, they said it revealed that the deal involving Malibu Oil and Gas Limited in oil prospecting lease, OPL 245, deprived Nigeria of an estimated $6 billion U.S. dollars, double the country's annual budget for education and health. And I find it interesting that, you know, that they do that comparison with the, the budget on education and health because it's very uh, glaring how low that uh, budget is. But in the scale of things, really looking at the overall budget for uh, the year, it's something to consider. But then the analysis was carried out by the Resources for Development Consulting mm. on behalf of Global Witness. They said the estimated losses were calculated using an oil price of $70 per barrel as a basis. But then ENI criticized the way it was calculated because they said the calculation allegedly ignored the possibility that Nigeria had the right to revise the deal to claim a 50% share of the production revenues. Take us through the details and the angles that we can cons consider in the story. Yes, um, <clears throat> this story has been ongoing now for quite a while now. We, we all are fully aware of the OPL 245 that was, uh, you know, uh, without any due process followed or transparency uh, followed in, in the ownership of the OPL 245 then in 2011 was sold to a company called Malibu then. And Malibu, then, yes. Uh, and this company was uh, allegedly meant to be owned by the former petroleum minister, which is uh, Dan Etete or so then. So, you know, this issue has been ongoing and it was marred with a lot of controversy then uh, in uh, 2011 then. It's very, very shocking when we see the amount that has been calculated that we're losing through mm. these deals. Mm. Six billion dollars is what they're saying that we could have accrued to ourselves if the deal had been done properly. And, uh, you know, with uh, any ENI and Shell had paid the right amount that was meant to have been paid mm. through the federal government account uh, legitimately we would have been earning a lot more. And, you know, this speaks a lot of volume to the issues that we're, uh, we've, we've been facing in the oil and gas industry, issues that has to do with transparency, accountability, and the, the, the sheer magnitude of corruption that goes on in that oil and gas uh, sector. It's very opaque. Mm. And we've been asking, you know, this is why we need to have the, the PIG bills passed. Because well, I, what difference would that make? In, because in this, I mean, looking at this situation in particular. Because when you look at the, the situation, what happens with the PIG bill, mm -hmm. it, it it introduces a lot of transparency mm -hmm. in terms of governance in the way the petroleum the, the, sector has been handled. It's been handled okay. as well, and the way the transactions are, are being done. Mm -hmm. Because when we have a lot of situation where a lot of deals are being done in secrecy, and it's only the 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 presidency that is actually allowed to actually sign off these deals and also the ministers of petroleum it creates a lot of secrecy and this is what you get at the end of the day nigerians end up being short changed mm. or shrouded um, i mean he, he shrouded away from the details uh moving on now to new telegraph thank you Bolahan, for that uh new telegraph newspaper this story is back again uh, we promised we we're going to follow it very closely to a conclusive end uh, but we see that from new telegraph newspaper sex for marx is still back in the news court denies ex oau lecturer Akindele bail. The Federal High Court that sat in Oshobo in Oshun State yesterday refused to grant him bail. And uh, in, in the details of the story, when you go through it, Adedumade, you find that uh, the court, uh, the proceedings actually was presided over by uh, Justice Maureen Onyetenu. Uh, she ordered the ICPC Council to produce video evidence of the lecturer and his students uh, ha involved in the Sexual acts. <laughs> I, I was struggling said. with saying having that. Here fun. Because, <laughs> you know, I also had a problem with that because I was like, why use that term having fun? In court. Yeah, why not say it explicit? You know, but mm. anyway, 
uh, that's up to them. But yes, just like you said, um, the story is back and it's actually um, good to know that the matter didn't just get swept under the carpet mm-hmm. when it came on air several weeks or about months, months ago. ago yeah. Now, but um, we must not forget that the ICPC is prosecuting the lecturer on about four counts bordering one on of course the demand for sex and also on the issue of altercation of his age yeah so which is why he's in court alteration of the age yes 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 yes, okay yes so now um but what thing i found interesting was okay yes they said that um they were not going to grant the bill on that day and the matter was adjourned till december Mm. for them to lead more evidence on the application for bill Mm. now that is actually good because um what the prosecution said was that the court should not grant him bill based on the fact that there was a time they had an agreement with him that he would travel abroad for uh, medical treatment and when he comes back he was going to come to their office or submit himself to their office for one reason or the other, and he did not do that. Mm. So they are afraid that if they grant him bail this time, he might also not show up. So trust, court. trust issues. Trust issues, mm. basically. But um, let's see what the court decides and the more evidence that they provide before the next John Day. But one thing I also found very interesting is the reason why trial did not continue. Now, according to the story, it said that um, the prosecution's witness was in court. And there were also counsels for the prosecution in court. Mm. But however, they did not move forward with trial because the lead counsel for the ICPC was not in court. And he wanted to handle the matter himself. Mm. Now, I want to raise an issue here, which I feel is one of the reasons why there is so much delay in our criminal justice system. Now, why is the court waiting for the lead counsel? Now, there are... The witness is in court and there are lawyers in court who are prepared and ready to take on the matter. But so why the delay? So why the delay? Because someone has an official engagement. He cannot be in all the courts at the same time. So should we now stall all the other cases because he is not there? I believe that courts from now going forward should begin to refuse this kind of applications, especially when the accused person is still on bail. Mm. Sorry, is still being remanded without bail. Because this person is in prison and his trial is not continuing because you have an appointment to do you, go to. Do you see this as a reflection of uh, of us and our attitude towards s- situations like that? For uh, The sex remarks scandal raised a lot of uh, uproar. and People uh, started speaking more about this uh, than it was, that it was before. Uh, do you think that you know it's just a direct reflection of how lackadaisical, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, uh, the no, attitude no, that no. we, we, we it show is towards things like this? It is not being because I've seen, I've, I've actually seen this go on in court and happen in court a number of times. So mm. it's something that happens all the time. So it is not born out of a lackadaisical attitude. Sometimes there might be a cogent reason for it. But I just don't believe that this one is one of those reasons, especially when there are people in court to continue. Also, we must not forget the bill that is before the House of Rep, mm. which was passed by the Senate. That is the sexual that is the sexual harassment in tertiary institutions bill. Okay. Now this was passed by the Senate some time ago, but the House of Rep has sat on that bill for more than a year now, almost going to two years. Back to my point. Well, my question. Well, 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 <laughs> well, um, See? this might not be a lackadaisical attitude because I would not want to say the House of Rep is being, um, is being lackadaisical about it. Mm-hmm. But what I would just want them to do is to pass the law speedily. They raised some cogent reasons why they've not passed it in that it was focusing majorly only on universities and that they felt it could be all encompassing, but um, they've still not done anything till now. Alright, thank you very much. I'll go very quickly to you, Bola uh, Lagos, remember, if you're sending the messages, they send it to WhatsApp on 0809 440 981. we're back talking about the drama that ensued a few days ago. In fact, leading back uh, to uh, several months uh, on the Aquaibom State Assembly, uh, there was drama yesterday. There's a bit of violence that sparked up. Confusion at the sitting of the Aquaibom State House of Assembly as five all progressive Congress lawmakers that were embroiled in some controversy uh, months back. Uh, they tried to come back to impeach or seat to impeach the state governor, uh, Udom Imano. They said the five lawmakers were the ones whose seats were recently declared vacant. And we know how they reacted to that situation when it happened. At this time around, they said it was gathered that they shut all the doors before commencing the impeachment processes that lasted for just very few minutes. And it started at 10.05 a.m. Take us through this drama.
Yes, uh, well, we all know the backdrop to the story, yeah. uh, what happened. Of course, these five lawmakers had recently defected from the PDP to the APC party, and because of that, their seats were declared uh, uh, vacant. Yes. So, although, we, you know, there's still a lot of controversies about when uh, party officials actually defect from one party because to that the question other. has been also, raised a couple of times more people have been cross capitalizing and they still you know retain their uh, the political seats. will yeah, so to speak you know we've had this so many times it's happened uh, you know at the national level as well to where there's been a lot of defections so there's a lot of uh, 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 th there's lack of clarity anyway on the way forward as well to when you uh, when you vacate when you cross carpet I used meant to vacate the seat because mm. you were actually elected into office under the banner of a particular party or so. Okay. So when we look at that, now this situation is now led to the um, the five lawmakers now who are now with the APC now who stormed the the national the state assembly or so mm -hmm. uh, on Tuesday, mm -hmm. and this caused a lot of fracas uh, w when they stormed the state assembly or so. You know, there were a lot of gunshots that were fired and uh, cars were burnt as well too. Mm -hmm. And it's alleged as well too that you know the police were actually barking. They were backing these five lawmakers as well because the, the governor later on that day actually stated or announced as well too that you know uh the police were behind this and he's been asking for the reposting of the commissioner of police who mm. had just been recently repos uh who had just been posted redeployed yeah or deployed mm. to acquire a bomb yes. just a few days earlier so mm. so you know there's a lot of controversy saying that the police were in on this and also, they're also pointing fingers, of course, on the former governor of uh, Akwai Bom, who is Gosu Will Fabio, who, who we know. Who still has a, 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 of a influence. lot of hands, exactly. He has a lot of influence as well, too, and we know as well, too, he recently defected onto the APC. And we know how crucial AP, uh, Akwai Bom is as well to the APC. They're very desperate to ensure that they win at all costs. Mm. That's the APC at that, in that state. Thank you very much, uh, Balahon, for that analysis. Adedu Made, you're up next for the story on New Telegraph newspaper. Court reverses dismissal of Uni Laurie Asu Chair Secretary. This uh, came, was greeted with a lot of cheer as uh, this news uh, broke. It's more than a year after they were sacked by the management of the University of Laurie Choir State. The National Industrial Court uh, sat in Akura, Undo State Capital. Uh, the, reinstated the chairman and secretary of the institution's chapter of the academic staff union of universities, Dr. Kayade Afolaya and Dr. Solomon Oyalikon. And the court did not stop there. They awarded the sum of 500,000 naira against the university in their favor and ordered the salaries and allowances of the two unions to be paid from the time of their suspension to date. What are your thoughts, man? Well, um, I'm very, very glad the court made the decision. Um, for two particular reasons, first of all. The first one is, these people were first um, dismissed as a backlash from their whistleblowing. Okay. You know, and the court actually reinstating them actually puts more confidence in the process of whistleblowing in itself because people now realize that, okay, even if someone comes back at you by virtue of you saying the truth, yes. then at least you can still rely on the court to do the justiceable thing. Mm. So now that is the first reason and I'm glad that this happened. The second reason is also because they are members of a union. Mm -hmm. Now we all know that um, with regard to laws pertaining to trade unions, you know, they are not supposed to be um, persecuted mm. by virtue of their roles. Now, I believe that because that they were ASU, this is the ASU chairman and also the secretary, um, be because they were dismissed, it could be seen as if they were persecuted based on their positions in ASU. Mm. That is aside from the whistleblowing, of course. And just like I said earlier, this um, puts more confidence in the system you know when you think about such things mm. so the court did a really great thing and i also like the fact that um they were awarded um damages at least for the time being mm. and also interest on the amount payable because i understand that those um, the school itself might go on appeal yes but now this decision of the court has said that 20 percent interest until the money is paid mm -hmm. so no matter how long they go on on appeal There's, if the appeal money. doesn't set aside the judgment of the court then mm -hmm. they are still going to pay the money i want them to just reinstate them i want them to celebrate them in their school and i want other members of asus to see it as a victory 
for themselves and the union as well. My only concern is really when if this passes and then uh, there's no appeal from the university, how much backlash they would get from the school body. That's another uh, thing to Well, I'm for. sure they're also still going to keep their eyes open. You know, yeah. now you must understand that this is a former VC. So yeah. there's a, a new person there now. Right. So I'm sure that person will not want to continue with that culture. Thank you very much, uh, Adedumade, for that. Bolaho, uh, next for the story from this day newspaper. Senate to federal government suspend planned 500% increase in tariff on alcoholic beverages. Uh, so the federal government has uh, been asked to do this. The Senate uh, sat on this and in, in this advice, they also added uh, an advice for the ta tariff hike and saying that the operators or the businessmen who are involved in the sales of these products really should consider uh, you know, making sure that when this increase is affected, uh, suggesting a 50% increase uh, over uh, as against the 500% increase, say if they experience any sort of increase whatsoever, they should just consider it as adding to the economic fortune, economic fortune of the country. What are your thoughts on this? Well, um, I, I think both parties uh, have a valid point uh, that they've raised. I'm talking about the senators and also we're looking at the federal government as mm -hmm. well too. Mm -hmm. You know, as at mm -hmm. June 4th, anyway, the federal government the federal government actually increased the uh, tariff mm. or the taxes on uh, cigarettes and also on uh, alcoholic, beverages. alcoholic beverages as well too. And the, 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 the increase was meant to be uh, graduated. 2018, there was meant to be a one naira increase per stick on each cigarette. Yes, yes. The same thing as well too for, for also the alcoholic beverages as well too. There was supposed to be some level of increase as well too. Mm -hmm. So we're looking here now where the the senators are actually saying that that increase would cause a lot of problems and harm as well to, to the businesses that are involved in the production of cigarettes and alcohol and they're also alcohol as well too. Mm. Well, of course, they do have a valid point because when I look at the current sales level of most of all these um, products, alcoholic beverages now, the sales have really dropped as well too. Mm -hmm. And that is partly due to the economic situation. Sure about on one part though, I mean... Nigerian beer is in it. Go and have a look at yeah. it. Yeah, you just made an ad. They might not be making, a, <laughs> they might not be making some as premium much. drinks. Yes. yes. The lower segments mm. have had an increase. In, in, on that corner though, uh, uh, Bolahon, yes. the, 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 some of them complain of excess charges, yes. uh, even charges that are outside the book that are placed on them uh, from officers visiting their, their shops in their offices just trying to do especially in this season again close to uh, you know holiday season and all that on the other part do you suggest do you suspect there might be some level of influence from the marketers of on, course there is the because center. you know this is this is this is a democracy anywhere in the world anyway you would always have people that are called the lobbyists anyway right. who would approach the lawmakers and, and to try to get them decisions. to sue in their favor. So, of and course... The, and the, the beer lobby is world famous. Of course. And so, the people behind this uh, man and <laughs> obviously... <famous>. They, <laughs> so, of course, there will be a lot of pressure as well too from them. Thank you, gentlemen, for that. And uh, Bolaho, thank you very much. Uh, moving on now to this next story from Daily Times newspaper. A war against tar uh, graft gets tough as two witnesses die after testifying against ex-governor. Mm. The details say a detective with the Economic and fin Financial Crimes Commission, Adekunle Odofe, on Tuesday informed that Justice Okwa Abang of the Federal High Court in Abuja that two witnesses who made crucial statements during the investigation into an alleged 29 billion naira fraud case involving a former Adamawa State Governor, Motala Yako, died mysteriously after giving their statements. What are your thoughts on this? What happened? Well, we're not going to say much. It's still more court proceedings. Mm. And almost with the headline, it looks like a horror story. But yes. it's not in Nollywood. It seems like something out of Nollywood. It's the same anti-corruption cases and the proceedings and how long they've taken. These are actually two key witnesses. One was the former account officer. He worked for Zenith Bank. Mm. Uh, uh, he held or he maintained the 200 accounts for the state, which were withdrawn from. And he made some statements before he died. Mm. Um, also, the cousin to Nyako, who was also among those who withdrew about 800 million from the state's account and credited to uh, an unspecified uh, company. Yes. So the question here was why would a non government staff have the capacity to withdraw? And it was said that um, this withdrawal was done on the instruction of the state governor then, that's Nyako, which mm. is why he's under this 29 billion. Naira, um, what do you call it? Uh, 29 billion uh, money laundering case. Yes. Now, there, his sons were also 
uh, joined in the case on a 37 count charge uh, for uh, money laundering, criminal conspiracy, stealing and abuse of office. Mm. I, I, I really do hope and wish that our judiciary can drive these cases to some logical conclusion. Thank you because very much. This is whatever we see or we experience that is missing in Nigeria, mm. this is where it was going to. That's where the core uh, core issues are, are coming mm. from. From New Telegraph, uh, Devo, this uh, still staying with you. Uh, just to touch on this story, federal government approves new regulations to end gas flaring. My question is, when will we finally see this being applied? <laughs> well, this is not just the policy or the, you know, the sometimes announcement. Sometimes they come out as sound bites. Uh, and I'll say this very briefly. Um, to regulate or to create policy is part one. Yes. Part two is to enforce. So um, there wasn't any breakdown as to what these new laws are, but um, we want to see, uh, how do I call it? Action. Executive uh, delivery on yeah. behalf of the federal government as regards um, enforcing these uh, new regulations. Thank you, Devo. And here can send to this message from VI. It says, good morning, crew. Does EFCC have the right to freeze Metu's account or the court? Uh, Timmy, thank you very much for greeting us. Good morning to you, Good too. Question. <laughs> Saint Fajo says, Olisa Metu is not the only person that's embezzled money. Why is he being frustrated this way? We have messages on YouTube uh, from Michael Adetutu, who said, I uh, read an article on BBC, and what I deduced from the article was where bribery and corruption untrained uh, richest African economy with poor citizens, highest rate of extreme poverty, Dan et et et. Victor Musa says, Metu should beg the courts to expedite the case rather than all the theatrics that they we're used to seeing. That way he will prove his innocence and have access to his accounts. Michael Adetutu goes forward to, ask, uh, to add fraud, handling ownership of uh, OPL245 to Malibu, a company had secretly, he secretly owns, due diligence not done by Shell, in all, Nigerian government was uh, claimed to be paid the exploration rights. Thank you very much, everyone, for sending me your messages. A special thanks to Annalise came in here, uh, despite the odds of Lagos traffic and everything. Uh, Mr. G Quest is Bola, you can find him there on Twitter at Mr. G Quest and at Hedjuma Day. Have Nibu a great day, Lagos. Thank you very much. And Divo, <laughs> you need some rest. <laughs> Thank you so very much for coming in. Lagos, let's talk about sports next here on Smooth 98.1. Uh, Good morning. Yes, quick. Yes, for two